Here it is, this one right here. This is from the Texas Science of Teaching Reading Exam. I want you to take a, I want you to take two minutes. I want you to read it over and then we'll talk about it, okay? A two minutes on your own. Ungo. I shrunk my camera down to see if that works a little better. We'll test it out. Okay, team, let's take a look at this. Okay, it says here uh, um, it, it's dealing with pre kindergarten. So we're back in preschool for a moment. It says here a pre kindergarten. Let's circle that. What are we dealing with here? Kindergarten is maybe five to six. So pre kindergarten, let's say, is four to five. So we're dealing with this group of students in preschool, in pre kindergarten. They're not reading yet. Most of them are not reading yet. So this is very, very basic stuff. A pre-kindergarten teacher frequently reads aloud high quality literature to develop children's familiarity with literary texts. Okay, so let's just look at that sentence. The teacher's doing a read aloud. They're doing a read aloud of a literary text. Maybe like Fro Frog and Toad. It's got that award there. It's high, that's considered, uh, well, that would fall under um, a high quality literary text, right? So we're doing some, uh, or, or, and there's so many more. I just chose that one. Probably could have chose better ones. But anyways, high quality literature. Okay, so these are also, this is also narrative text, narrative text, right? A lit, high quality literature is a narrative text. Literary text is a narrative text, okay? Um, which, uh, think of Frog and Toad. Which of the following accompanying activities would best promote the children's understanding of basic story structure? So we think about basic story structure for a narrative text. You want to right away think about like beginning, middle, end. You want to think about the care the, the, the story elements like characters and the and the plot, uh, which is sort of the beginning, middle, and end. So that's that's uh, character, setting you know, plot, which is beginning, middle, and end, these elements here, okay? So this is your friend here, basic story structure. Hopefully you got that when you read this. So we're thinking basic story structure. So we wanna help them with basic story structure. Having the children use prompts to act out scenes from the story. Well, a four-year-old, if you give them prompts to act out scenes from the story, I think they're going to get lost in that dramatic play, right? Yes? All the parents in my room know what I'm talking about, and the teachers do too, right? If you give that if you if you were to do dramatic play here, dramatic play might be really great for um for developing um oral language and developing social skills, but in terms of basic story structure, not so great. How about uh, pre-teach unfamiliar vocabulary? This is a great idea. Isn't this a best practice? Well, here's the thing. We're dealing with pre-kindergarten, four-year-old. So you're not going to have a whole lot of, you're not going to have a whole lot of tier two and tier three words, right? Mainly it's going to be tier one words, those everyday words. And, and this isn't really, uh, this isn't really the time. If, if that's what you're focusing on story structure, it's not really the time to, uh, be focusing on pre-teaching that vocab. And that vocabulary, you know, it's it's not like the older grades where you, you can pre-teach it before you actually teach the lesson. This is something where you're actively teaching the vocabulary as the lesson's going on. So yeah, it's not gonna work. Okay, how about this one right here? Stop at appropriate places in the story and make predictions. If you're trying to focus on um, story structure, making predictions would be maybe basic, you know, critical reasoning and inferential comprehension stuff. And, and that's not really what we're doing. That's not the focus. Okay. Give the children picture cards of events in the story to tell in sequence. And that's kind of what this picture is here. Okay. 
if you register, this is on, let's say, uh, uh, how a seed becomes a tree. And the students would have to, after hearing the story, without, there's no words here. They're just going to sequence the seed. It grows a stem and then leaves. Voila, it's a tree. So they're just getting the events that match up with the story. And then they then you want them to retell it. And, and this would be a great activity um, because what, what this activity does is it, uh, it goes through story structure, which is good. It's very visual. It's a visually supported activity, but, but also it has the student do the retelling. And then the student is going to practice some of that language that was involved in the story as they do the retell. So they're going to be using words like seed, stem, leaf, trunk, you know, uh, to describe the life cycle of a tree. So that's actually cool. This is, um, I have a picture that might be more appropriate for, let's say, a informational text, but this could have been done for like a narrative text. We just would have had like, you know, uh, toads in bed, frog gets him dressed, and then they go skiing down the hill, right? So, so it could have been modified for a, uh, um, a, 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 a narrative text. Cool question, T. Um, I hope you're enjoying these questions from different states. So if you're in North Carolina or you're in Ohio or you're in Massachusetts or wherever state you're watching this from, I hope you can see that there's a lot of great practice looking at these different exams, right? So we can learn a lot from this exam by, by um, you can learn a lot from your exam by looking at these other exams. Something that we, we talked about in, in a different class or in the intro to this class, but I'm just going to pull it out because I, I was just there uh, um, yesterday looking at this, was this map of the different Pearson exams. And, and these ideas that are maybe on your test if you're taking the 90 or 190 or 62 or, or an um, AOE test or Praxis or Grace, any of these exams here, the same ideas that are here are, are on these exams here. And they're the same exams that are on these exams here. So we can learn a lot from studying this test if you're from here. And, we can, and you can learn a lot from this test studying this test or this test. So all these exams are really good practice. So hopefully we can get some cross pollinization going and you see, you see why I'm doing this, but great exam. Take a look at it. It is the science of teaching reading and uh, you get lots of review of core ideas. Okay. The answer is D, right? Okay. Let's go to the next one. Let's see here. This next one is a little harder. It, it's um, it's well, it's not harder. I mean, it's from a reading specialist exam. So, you know, it might be a little harder. I don't think it's that much harder. Maybe the prompt is a little wordier. So this is the prompt. So you're probably gonna have to take a little bit, a little longer to read the prompt. And then we can answer the question. I don't think it's a harder question, but the prompt is a little longer. So here, why don't you take two minutes and uh, and take a look at this, uh, look at this uh, um, question, okay? Two minutes, just read the prompt and then we'll talk about it, okay? Two minutes on your own, go. Pause or turn it back on, okay? Um, they like to, in these, in these questions from this exam, they like to repeat reading specialist, reading specialist. That's fine. It's a reading specialist exam. But I'm just going to put down here that, that this could also, it doesn't have to be a reading specialist here. This could very well have just been a teacher, right? A, uh, a pre-K teacher observes a pre-kindergarten teacher, you know, or a lead teacher, right? I mean, honestly, if you've ever been to a, a pre-kindergarten classroom, you know that there are there are there are amazing teachers in that classroom that have been teaching for twenty or thirty years. Yes, and and while they may not, they, and they know more about those classrooms than you'll ever know, right? 
I mean, they've been teaching for 20 years, 30 years. So, so you could just have a, a senior teacher coming in, which I guess would qualify as a specialist. But obviously, right? You have a senior teacher. A senior teacher observes a new teacher, right? Uh, read aloud an illustrated book called Sugar Snap Peas to the class. Okay. So whether this is a reading specialist or senior teacher, you know, there's lots of different ways in which this question works. All right, this is that this is a page from the text. If you've never read it, Sugar Snap Peas. The reading specialist creates a page uh, for each child to include copies of six key illustrations taken from the book. Okay, presented in random order. Okay, so let me read that one more time. A reading specialist creates a page for each child that includes copies of six key illustrated illustrations taken from the book presented in random order. So I think what they're going with is with these illustrations or pictures, they're doing the sequence or order again, just like this one here, right? This was about, um, you know, picture cards and putting them in the right sequence. It's picture cards of the story and, and putting them in the right sequence. Kind of same thing here, right? Same friend. This is the, the teacher getting pictures or illustrations in random order. So order is probably going to be part of the activity. In an activity, in an after activity, the re in in an activity after the read aloud, the child cuts out the pictures from the, the page, sorts the pictures into story sequence, and pastes them into a staple booklet that you uh, they can keep. Okay, so this is a very common activity, right? Preschool teachers, isn't this something that you do a lot? Okay, I I know because my daughter brings home these books all the time, but in this type of sorting activity. The child is taking the pictures or illustrations or photos. She's sequencing them in the right order from the text. Okay. And it's something that can be brought home. The activity has a whole bunch of purposes, print awareness, all sorts of, all sorts of stuff, um, oral language applications, but it also has sequencing events in a story. After the child practices reading the books to the classmate using the pictures as a guide. So again, they have that retell. There's so many cool things here. So this activity we've seen in this question and this question, what are the elements? The, the, the student in both cases is, well, it's pre-kindergarten, right? So they're not reading yet. So since they're not reading yet, they're using the picture cards or, or illustrations for major events. And it has them organize or sequence the major events in the right order, is that right? So both of them have that characteristic, taking the pictures and organizing in the right order. And then the second piece that they both have, they say it in different ways. This one says, then they do a retell. Okay. And then this one says, uh, afterwards, the children's practice reading their books to their classmates, which is essentially a retell. So what are they doing there? Well, they're practicing getting the structure of the story. They're practicing oral language and using that oral language to describe and, and to help them expand out their language. So there's a lot of elements going on in this one. But I think the friend here that you want to look for is the um, a sequencing, sequencing store, uh, photos from a story. That's, the, that's your friend. So let's look at the question. Everyone take one minute. Now read this question on your own. Go. On pause. In addition to providing the children with practice and book handling skills, which is absolutely going on in this because they're they're getting their own book and they're going to read it to their classmates. They got to hold it right. They got to take care of it. They got to start at the beginning, go to the end. This activity reinforces uh, key print concepts that il that illustrations in a book. Okay, so this one, it's actually a print awareness activity, but key concepts that that illustrations in the book so there there are key ideas in the book that what correspond to store uh correspond to the story conveyed in the print so this is actually that um the pictures here match up with the text right this is actually um reinforcing print awareness that the uh, story can be matched up with a or a story or the text can be matched up with uh, with the text. So this is matching up pictures with the text in a meaningful way. Um, it's not really about directionality. It's not really about interpreting 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 the story. 
uh, it's not really about um, um, uh, that uh, the illustrations can appear above or below the printed story. It's not really, it's about matching up that the pictures match up with the story, right? Now, it's also, it also could have been uh, a story structure question. This one is not. This one comes from this test and it's in a section where they're testing out print awareness. Um, but there could have been an option here, D, involving helping them with um, story, story elements, right? And plot and sequence of events. So that's why I put it in here because it could very easily have been an activity that reinforces um, um, what, what elements of story structure? Well, sequence of events. Okay. So I'm squeezing this in, but I, st I think it could, I think it could still work as a, uh, a story structure question. Okay. All right. So team, those are two great questions. This one's from the reading specialist exam. The answer is D it's from this test here. You get a little review of some of these ideas, print awareness, directionality, reading from left to right. Uh, oh, put that in twice, sequence of events. So we can learn a lot from um, story structure from this Texas exam. And uh, we can learn a lot from story structure and an activity involving story structure and print awareness from this reading specialist exam in Massachusetts. And we, we can learn a lot from other, other problems throughout the United States. We just need to take a look at these questions and, and sort of review these scenarios. All right. Let's um, let's keep going, okay? Here we go. Let's do another story element and narrative text question. This is going to focus on um, teaching story elements to to young students. So we're dealing with a narrative text, and we want to help students understand character, setting, problem, solution. You know, plot, some major events like uh, A, B, C, kind of like beginning, middle, and end. And these would be things that if we're, if we're working with a student and they're coming across a narrative text for the first time, if we're doing a read aloud, these would be things that we want to emphasize in our instruction so they start to see that this narrative text, it always has a setting. It always has um, characters in it. And, there's a, and sometimes the, there's the character faces a problem and then there's a solution. Okay, uh, so so there's a lot of other texts that I could have chosen other than Frog and Toad, but this is the one. But th th this these types of books here they have all these elements to it, right? Okay, let's like take a look. All right, this is a little longer one, team. I want you to take uh, two minutes. A little harder. I want you to read this one to yourself. Okay, on your own. Um, go. Okay, so basically, what is it saying? We have a kindergarten student, five to six year old. They've got some limited limited exposure to storybooks, okay? And, and limited experience in discussing these narrative texts. So this is really, you know, how we're gonna help them with narrative texts and storybooks. Where, where would we start with a student that has a limited exposure to storybooks? Uh, their teacher wants to develop their knowledge of story structure. Okay, so here's our friend. Well, they have limited exposure. So where do we begin? The first thing we begin with is story structure. And when we think of story structure, we're going to think about, always think about these elements that are found in narrative text story structure, right? Uh, then it goes into this very long uh, sentence. According to evidence-based practices, which of the following instructional approaches is most likely to accelerate children's understanding of the casual nature of story events? I love this question. They try to make it as wordy as possible. According to evidence-based practices, which of the following instructional strategies is most likely to accelerate 
I, I tested that they actually use on this practice exam, they use this word a lot, accelerate. But I don't think in education, we use that word a whole lot, accelerate. We want to accelerate. I mean, maybe you do, but they use that word a lot in this exam. So we they're dropping names here. Instructional approaches, accelerate, evidence-based practices, and then casual nature of story events. This should have just read, how do we help the student with story events, right? This is all just fluff, right? This is all extra. How do we help the student with story structure or story events? So when they came up with these new, when they come up with these new exams, they go to the old exams, they rewrite them, and they got to make those questions look impressive. So what do they do? Well, instead of saying, how do we help them with story structure? They drop as many terms in to make it as linguistically complex as possible. Evidence-based practices, instructional approaches, accelerate. You know what I mean? So basically, we have a student that had struggling with storybooks. How do we help them with story structure? Right? That's what it's saying. How do we help them with story structure or events? So what could we do? Is it ask them text-dependent questions? We mentioned that before, text-dependent questions are questions that a student um, answers after reading, and they have to read the text in order to uh, answer those like who, what, where, when, and why questions. Uh, is that going to help them? Well, they're really basic. They're, they're, they're working on the more, most basic stuff with story structure. Um, um, and this, this asking them text-dependent questions is good. Mm -hmm. it, that could be good. But, you know, you're going to ask them text spending questions involving, you know, story structure. So this is probably not the most uh, direct way of helping them with story structure. How about this one right here? Having children practice, and it's also happening after the fact. You can ask these questions after they read. We want to help them before they, you read the text, right? So text dependent questions are after. We want to do something before. How about this one? Have children practice putting, oh, look at this one putting photocopies of pictures taken from storybooks in order. Okay, so that's good if you want to work on a sequence of events, right? So that's it. That, that activity, this one right here, is the same as this here. It's the same as this here, right? So that is actually, that's, I could see how that could be, the. I mean, that would be helping them with um, the order if your goal was to help them with order and sequence of events. And yes, it could help them with beginning, middle, and end. Okay, that's true. Uh, so I could I could almost feel like it could be C. Well, let's good keep going. Reread favorite stories to children and let them dress up as a character. So this is dramatic play again. Kind of feel like that dramatic play. Notice how it was mentioned here. Um, uh, act out scenes, dramatic play going on. I think that's really great if you're trying to build up. Um, 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 social skills, working with an working with a partner or building up oral language, you want them to practice that dramatic play and build those social skills. But but really that we're not we're trying to get them a story structure. So probably not the best one there. How about this one right here? A student with limited exposure. What do you do first? Well, I think D is out. I think B is out. So it's either C or A. Teaching story elements explicitly, such as character, goal, and problem resolution as part of their daily reading. So if I had to choose between A or C, I would choose A because this is sort of saying we're going to do some explicit direct instruction on story elements, right? And, and in that direct instruction, we're going to make it a pr practice to, to give them some exposure to story structure by going over characters, goal and problem resolution, right? And then maybe once they have that exposure, then this activity here is going to work. Does that make sense? Let me clear this off. So what they have limited exposure to this. So we're going to have to explicitly teach those elements, right? As part of a daily routine. And once they have that minimum exposure, this is the basics then activities like this can help with, let's say, sequencing events, 
part of story structure, right? Um, and then maybe after that, you can ask them, you know, text dependent questions once they're familiar with the basics, right? What, once they know what a setting is, then you can ask them about setting. And then, and then once they go through all that, then, hey, why not do some dramatic play of the story as an extension to, uh, to build social skills and oral language? But this one would come first. This would be like one, two, three, four. That's my opinion of the sequence of events here. You may have a different one. Okay, great question, right? Uh, this one's from uh, the 190. And uh, it, oops, it is uh, right here. The answer is A from this test. You got a lot of great review. Okay, team. So, so far in this series of questions on narrative text, we've done three questions. We've had a, a question from Texas and uh, involving story structure. And it had, um, it, it had that, that scenario with the story and, and, and organizing the, the picture cards, right? We had this uh, slightly harder question with a couple other things going on. But in addition to matching up pictures with print and building print awareness, um, it also had an activity involving story structure, right? And sequencing the events with story structure. This one here that we just did, uh, let me find it. Oops. This one here that we just did was probably a little harder because it um, it had to do with the student that has had very limited exposure to story structure. So before they can even do any of those activities that might support story structure, you're going to want to give them explicit instruction. Okay. So, so far we've got a pretty, uh, uh, this covers some of those basic questions involving narrative text with beginner readers. Okay. Thank you.